It's Tuesday, it's noon, and that means it's time for Moving Hawaii Forward. I'm your host, Tim Apicella. The rail project is $3 billion over budget. Currently, there is a full court press from Mayor Caldwell to plead to the state legislature that they must pass an extension of the half percent general excise tax. An excise tax is not a sales tax, it's far worse. An excise tax affects everything, the cost of everything that residents and tourists pay for. A tax not immediately noticed, but certainly felt later on. Felt especially by those who can least afford to pay it. The most recent bill introduced has been referred to as a Christmas tree bill. A bill that promises to collect enough tax dollars to pay for not just the rail budget shortfall, but also for schools, highway projects, and affordable housing. A bill which gives some elected officials a reason to smile about, but for those who are trying to support a family, little reason to be happy. A small part of the rail budget is tied to what Hart expects to get back from the public in the form of fair revenue. Today's show is titled Hart's Rail Ridership, Projections, Fantasies, Fairy Tales, and Alternative Facts. We're going to look at some of those ridership projections that Hart has desperately clung to since the inception of Rail Project. With me today is Cliff Slater, who co-authored with Randy Roth last week's Civil Beat article titled The Impending Honolulu Rail Ridership Debacle. The, question, the article questions the wildly inflated rail numbers that Mayor Mufi Hanneman pushed out to convince the city council, the state, the taxpaying public that the rail project is the magic silver bullet to solve all our traffic problems. And again, with me is Cliff Slater. Thank you, Cliff, for joining us. I very much appreciate it. Welcome. Thank you. Um, before I start the program, I want to, um, I've never met you before, and I want to render my heartfelt appreciation and thanks for you and Randy Roth and um, Governor Cayetano and um, Mr. Provadoras from standing up and trying to make a difference. It's not easy, and you're doing it because the general taxpayer, your fellow residents, um, are and have been paying for this rail project. And so thank you for standing up, trying to make a difference, and trying to bring some sanity to the public airways about what this rail is and what is not. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to ask you a little bit about how you got involved with this and a little bit of your history. Well, <clears throat> I got involved first in uh, 1985 or 86 uh, when uh, Frank Fossey had been um, elected mayor again. And, and he resurrected, uh, resurrected his uh, favorite elevated rail deal, which is almost identical to what we're looking at today. Um, <clears throat> and um, I initially thought in, in my innocence that, that the problem was that the, the legislators just didn't understand that, that, that this was a disaster, a fiscal disaster until I went around meeting with various senators and representatives and quickly came to the conclusion that they knew full well, but it was a political issue uh, that, that was going to generate a lot of campaign contributions. And so uh, then I, <clears throat> I gave up on that and we essentially took to the streets and the newspapers to, to, to warn the public. And, and in, this was... Uh, we managed to defeat that in 1992, um, and um, we were then called uh, COST, Committee on Sensible Transit, and that was that was a very successful thing. And I and I thought at that point that you know that was all over, and and then uh, <clears throat> subsequently was resurrected, uh, 2004 when when uh, Murphy Hanneman got elected. Uh, as mayor, and w w was uh, uh, obviously uh, looking to be uh, elected governor at the next gubernatorial election, and <clears throat> and so he needed to raise a lot of money. And there's nothing more that uh, generates money in campaign contributions than a rail line. It's that's just known, uh, and that's why. People choose um, light rail over buses. There, there, there's nothing, there's nothing functional, uh, more functional than a bus. Uh, but the the rail line, because they tend to be non-bid situations, 
um, or, or when I say non-bid, there's a lot of discretion involved, mm -hmm. and so <clears throat> a political discretion, and uh, and so then we were back in in the rail thing again. But this uh, this this time around, they were they were much more prepared to deal with us, and uh, they they brought in uh, some people uh, who really knew how to uh, deal with the PR, how to load up the neighborhood boards, and et cetera. Okay? Right. And so it was a different, it was a different animal. Right. So that kind of brings me to the question is, how did we get here? And I'm not just talking about how, you know, through the many years, but uh, through this uh, great, great uh, uh, extension of the budget that we're currently in. When we started off at $4 billion, give or take, and now we're we're, in, we're, we're, we're north of, well, we're, Mayor, Mayor Caldwell says we're now at $10 billion. Right, and, and, he's, and, um, and he's understating it. And uh, he's understating it I, still. I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you, I was always saying uh, it's going to be north of $7 billion, okay? And this was way back when they were coming up with the $5 billion mm -hmm. number. <clears throat> and, and that was primarily because it, it, I knew that once you start going down uh, uh, Dillingham Boulevard and, and, and along the waterfront that you're in a quagmire, okay? The, you, there's so many things that can go wrong that that's, and what we said was, that's where the cost overruns are going to occur. We thought, you know, they were starting this thing out in the country first right. because there would be no obstructions, there's no, there's no uh, burial sites uh, uh, out there. That got a clean. You know, a lot road. of agricultural land. Yeah, he, yeah, you couldn't go wrong. So, the, and the, what they would do was they they would try and build as much as they could so that you the, the courts and wouldn't want to stop them. Yeah. But well, that, you, you've already touched on a subject that I was going to discuss a little later, but since we're on it, let's let's go forward to that. And that is, the uh, Honolulu Transit Task Force mm -hmm. has estimated that the first third is already 76% over its, its cost. So in order to complete the second third and the third third, they just took a simplistic calculation of saying, well, the next, the next uh, third will be 76%, and the next third, the last third will be 76%, right? So you take all of that, it's 228%, times the original budget. I mean, uh, they're now calculating around 12.4 billion. But I, I suspect that that's such a simplistic approach because when you get to Dillingham and you get along the waterfront, you've got fill. You don't have solid rock down there. You don't have bedrock down there. You're going to have businesses to contend with. You're going to have the, the utilities, of course, which has been in the paper to contend with. You've got a whole um, a pyramid of, of issues that I think the last third is going to far exceed that 76% cost over, overrun. So. Um, you're absolutely right. It's just amazing on, on yeah. where we're at. And so people are gasping and, you know, clawing for air at $10 billion. And uh, I, I have to say that I, I'm not quite certain we're done with that. No. I, <clears throat> uh, Dr. Prevodoros, uh, he thinks it's going to be more like 13. Um, and I think he may be optimistic. You know, as they say about these large uh, public works projects, okay, but, the smartest guy in the room, you can tell, is the guy who thinks it's going to cost the most and take the longest. <laughs> there you are. Well, speaking of, of quotes, um, I'd like to look at a quote that uh, former San Francisco Mary, uh, Mayor Willie Brown said a couple years ago, and um, here it is. Uh, I'm going to miss the, uh, the first couple ones, but the one that I think I, is so telling and is so illuminating is uh, the following. In the world of civil projects, the first budget is really just a down payment. If people knew the real cost from the start, nothing would ever be approved. I mean, if we just had that on the ballot before you cast your vote, um, maybe people would see the correlation between uh, um, a very candid uh, Mayor Willie Brown and the proposal that is in front of them. Unfortunately, we don't. So the, the next quote is even more illuminating and, and, and true to form, and that is, the idea is to get going, start digging a hole and make it so big that there's no alternative to coming up with the money to fill it in. Wow, I mean, if that doesn't fit yeah. where we're at and where we're going to a T, I, I just don't know what does. So it's, um, it's the most appropriate um, uh, quotation. And, and I have to hand it to uh, Mayor Willie Brown. Thank you for being so candid. 
yeah. you know, uh, years out of office, but maybe you should have said a little bit closer to, yeah. you know, your engagement with the projects, but um, it is what it is. Uh, there's a term that's been used to describe how we got here as far as our cost overruns and how we got here as far as the voters approving for it mm -hmm. and how we got here as far as the city council approving it. And that is a term called st strategic misrepresentation. Yes. It's quite a term. It's quite a term. And so I just want to come up with a, a, a bit of a definition and see if this matches what you think it is. Um, it's not too far from what we just saw in the quotations from Mayor Brown. And that is the planned systematic underestimation of costs and overstatements of benefits done to increase support to having a large project approved. Mm -hmm. And the, the other one I would suggest is strategic silence. Um, the, for example, the, the, uh, the business community, the large business community has been silenced. So any businessman who, was, who, who's, who has a name in the community will, will not come and, and discuss rail with us. So you, there's nobody Why in is that, do you think? Are they worried well, about retribution or No, or they're not. Well, yes. In okay. this town. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, there are no proponents among the business community, okay? There was the first time around, but mm -hmm. no, not this time around. It's again one of the things they took care of early on. Make sure that no, none of the business people, either A, would come out against rail, or B, even be seen discussing it with us, okay, uh, on uh, on radio, TV. I've uh, tried to contact uh, those that represent Hart, and I've gotten uh, nowhere with my right. requests. Yes, and well, it's the same with, uh, you know, our problem has been with, with public television, for example, is we've said, you know, we, can you set up a, uh, a discussion thing with the, with the, with the pro-rail people? And, and, and they, they can't get anybody from the city or to, to come on There's the show. There's really been very limited debate from the very start. Yeah. In fact, the last time around in the, in the, in the 19, 1991 when it started, uh, the, the, the city did show up for, for, for one uh, thing, uh, discussion with, with us in front of the uh, Waikiki Improvement Association. Uh, and we just, it was just pitiful. I mean, we just really wiped the floor with them. Right, and, and they, they, uh, they learned something. And the, the mayor came out and, and it was headlines, gag order. Wow, okay. okay. Then, We're well, gonna get back to your ridership report. Uh, okay. We're gonna take a commercial break. Sure. I'm Tim Apicella. This is Moving Hawaii Forward. We'll be right back. Hello, this is Martin Despang. I want to get you excited about my new show, which is called Humane Architecture for Hawaii and Beyond. And it's going to be on Think Tech Hawaii from downtown Honolulu on Tuesday afternoons, 5 p.m. And we're going to talk about uh, to make architecture more inclusive on the islands, which is, what hu which is one of the definitions of humane, which is being tolerant of, uh, you know, many people of nature, of many other influences. So we're going to have some great guests, like today's guest, for example, uh, my collaborator, David Rockwood, who is the author of the awesome um, manifestation of uh, humane architecture in the background. So see you on Tuesdays, 5 p.m. I look forward to. Looking to energize your Friday afternoon? Tune in to Stand the Energy Man at 12 noon. Aloha Friday, here on Big Tech Hoi. Welcome back. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host for Moving Hawaii Forward. This afternoon, we're speaking with Cliff Slater, and we're talking about his article and Randy Ross' article about the overinflated ridership projections for the rail project, amongst also how, the, how we got here in this mess to begin with. Cliff, thank you very much for joining us again. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, what I would consider as voter apathy. And uh, I don't know if it's burnout or not, but I'm gonna, we're going to take a look at a quote by the uh, recently former Senator Sam Slom. And um, basically he's saying at this point, a lot of people in the community have just given up. They've given up trying to make any kind of change whatsoever. Many of them have been involved in the past battles, the rail or the general excise tax or something else. And those who haven't moved away just feel that you can't fight City Hall. Now, before the commercial break, you just said something known as uh, a, a term you just came up with called strategic silence. Mm -hmm. And that is, if, if they won't engage with you, 
does it feel like you're just banging your head against the wall as you're trying to alert to what some of the obvious shortfalls are to the project to begin with? Right. Yeah. It's very difficult. Yes. Um, I wonder uh, if, you know, my dream of dreams, if it would be so nice to say, if there's a, a proposal going before the ballot, particularly for rail, to have a little disclosure saying, if, if the project is 25% over budget, this will be your new tax for car tabs and weight fees and uh, general excise tax or sales tax. And if the project's 50% over, this will be your new cost estimations per capita, per resident. And if it's 100% over budget, uh, would that be lovely just to see in dollars and cents what a cost of a project would be over a certain percentage? Well, you, you know, this, <clears throat> in government projects, there is no accountability. Uh, they all they all run over. I mean, whether, whether you talk about the stadium uh, or, or the, 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 the infamous baseball field that they that they built, or the, or the rail deal. I mean, public works projects run o run over, maybe double, but nobody is held ever held accountable for them. Do you think the public realizes and understands that quotation from former Mayor Willie Brown? Do they think that there's built-in mis, um, misrepresentations um, from the very start? I, 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 I personally think the public has a, a belief in their leaders and their elected officials that they, mm -hmm. um, they have good faith in, in moving projects and agendas ahead. Well, I don't, uh, you know, most people have never heard that comment before. Mm -hmm. okay? they're, they're not going to read it in, in any of the standard media. Um, it doesn't, I think it doesn't pay that for our standard media to oppose the, the, uh, the political establishment, and so they're not going to hear that. Mm -hmm. they're, well, not, they're not going to hear anything that's, that's really negative um, about the rail, okay? It's just not allowed. Yeah. Well, in my last two shows, I did go into specific detail about what the cost per resident is mm -hmm. and going to be for the life of the project. Uh, family of five, you could come up with a number around $25,000 from start to finish, and that's at Ala Moana. That doesn't even talk about going to um, University but of, this, of Hawaii. But, <clears throat> well, but there's two, two other things you know, after the construction is complete, okay? You've got the annual operating right. costs, okay? This, this is going to cost... Uh, I think they're they're talking about a hundred and forty million, and, yeah, hundred and forty million a oh, year. Okay, but, but it's going to be more than that because they're not going to have get the revenues as we show in our in our article. Uh, not. Not, they, there's no way that they're going to get the uh, the revenues they're projecting, and then in addition, the big issue is that the, the typical thing is that you are going to spend, when you get to the 40, 50 year mark, you're going to have spent uh, as much in real dollars, you will have spent as much in refurbishing and replacement as you spent in the first place. Right. Okay. Because we have a very salt salinity air quality and things rust a lot faster yeah, here. Well, I'm, it may be more for us, but I'm talking about that's the, you know, the average across right. the mainland when most of which <clears> are not <throat> subject to be accelerated to here. Yeah. 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 So, <clears throat> uh, the, the FDA uh, has suggested um, that the people people are building these things, it would be a good idea. They haven't made, made it mandatory, but it would be a good idea if they put aside a sinking fund. In other words, you start putting your money for, away, money right away, so that when you come to the 50-year mark, you've taken care of it. Because the, the, the so a lot of fashion capital reserves. Yeah, right. Planning. Okay, that's all it is. And and uh, you have to. It, for us, it would mean putting a, aside an additional hundred million dollars right. a year now, and that and that would have to get inflated. I, I'm sure that's one of the reasons Mayor Caldwell is desperately seeking um, the half percent uh, general sure. excise tax to be put forth in perpetuity. Yeah. That this will be an ongoing expense, and certainly they didn't want to discuss that during the um, you know the campaign to get the vote out and approve this. Yeah. <clears throat> most most people people don't seem to realize that when you take that much money out of the community, okay, that that's going to hurt. Like for example. Um, the, the people uh, at UH uh, Economics Department have calculated that <clears throat> that half a percent tax takes a thousand jobs out of the community. 
and and that which is about as many uh, jobs as was created uh, for the rail line. Right. Okay. Despite the inflated promise of 10,000, right. we're sitting around, what, well, 900? Well, there, no, there's a lot of jobs in Italy. Right. Okay. A lot of, a lot of jobs in the mainland, okay, mm -hmm. but they're not local jobs. That's correct. And that was um, kind of touted as one of the benefits. Yeah. Let's look at the, uh, the other benefits touted. And that was that the, uh, the traffic was going to be eased, that we're going to have 116,000 people riding this daily. Right. Yet, <clears throat> that's just during the peak hour. We just talked about jobs and uh, the 10,000. That was promised to be local jobs, but certainly didn't. So that didn't pan out. So <clears throat> the traffic projections didn't pan out. The jobs projection, job pro, uh, projections didn't pan out. But even if, even if, <coughs> even if the ridership panned out, okay, the, the the forecast still shows clearly that traffic congestion will be far worse uh, in the future than it is today. That's if you get the ridership. If you don't get the ridership, then it's going to be even worse. Well, it's going to be worse because based on those very aggressive projections, you have projects like the Hope Apili. T almost 12,000 units that's now going to have 12,000 households going to try to get into downtown mm -hmm. to work. Yeah. It has to, by definition, get worse. So maybe they're trying to build <laughs> enough developments out there to actually get to their 116,000. I don't know. But um, it's certainly, it certainly is mystifying to me. And I want to talk about your article. And the title of that article was published in the Civil Beat on February the 13th. The title was The Impending Honolulu Rail Ridership Tobacco. And um, let's show the last slide. And what this clearly shows is that um, Honolulu at the very bottom, what has a population, the lowest one of the lowest populations of a million, yet we have one of the highest projections of, of ridership. Right. I find that fascinating. Yes, I get, you, you, it's, it's obvious that that's an outlier and that's not gonna happen. So this project, mostly um, resembles that which was in Puerto Rico, San Juan. Mm -hmm. That was an elevated rail system. They yeah. estimated, I believe, 114,000. Right. And in reality, their ridership was 76,000, 76% off. 76% off. Yeah, 76% off. Yeah. 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 off. Um, if, if Parson Brinkenhoff used, and they were the consultants on the, that project as well, as well Miami, and um, <clears throat> the question is, if, if that's the experience of San Juan, why would that not be the experience here in, in, in Honolulu? Well, that's one of the things that I used to beg the city council to, to send somebody to San Juan to look at, look at the, that um, rail line, to find out why they went 78% over budget, okay, after their full funding grant agreement budget, <clears throat> find that out and find out why their ridership, in fact, their ridership is so bad that their bus, bus and rail ridership combined is less than what they were getting from the bus alone before they built the rail line. Okay. I, and and I, was, I begged them to go and investigate, have to send somebody, and I could not get any response at all. Was, mm -hmm. So in your estimation, um, how is it that this glaring overestimation has stood the test of scrutiny. Is it just because we have the silent misrepresentation that is known and will address it and that the walls are built? Well, it's and like, for example, it, <clears throat> the data, as I was saying before, the, the data shows that if we, if we don't have a, ra a, a ra build a rail line and we get all the ridership, okay, oh, excuse me, if we don't build a rail line, we'll have a 23% increase in automobile traffic. And if we do build a rail line and we get all the ridership that they promise, mm -hmm. okay, we'll still have a 21% increase in, in automobile traffic. Right. So the difference is 2%. And that's if you get the ridership. So $10 billion, probably $12 billion, divided by 2%. Yeah, um, no, it's, it's, it, the, the, from, from the get-go, yeah. the whole thing has never promised anything, okay? But again, you, you, see, the whole, you, you don't read 
worked in the final EIS, except in an obscure document in the, one of the uh, uh, comment areas, that it is not made clear at all that traffic congestion with rail will be worse than it is today. That's a statement they do make in responding to my comments, okay, but it bar it's buried in the 3,000 page document. FDA hints at such things as well. Oh, FDA, but, but later on, mm -hmm. okay. Right, right. Um, certainly not before the only vote we've had on it, okay. Right. They, they, uh, that was, in fact, the vote was, the vote for the, uh, uh, for, for rail was uh, on a Tuesday, and the draft EIS came out on Monday. Okay. Plenty of time to digest yes. it. Yes. Right. Yeah. Well, we're wrapping up here pretty quick. I wanted to ask you, um, where do we go from here? Where, voters just seem to be taking this on as a matter of fact, not realizing the financial impact to their families, and not only for this year, but years and years and years to come. Where do we stop? I mean, do you support the idea that we bring the rail down to street level, try to save a $3 billion by an alternative uh, line, or... Or well, we've, you know, this is where, where it is. We're somewhere around the $4 billion mark, right. okay, is what we have into the thing. Cancel all the contracts, pay off what's necessary. We're in for about $4 billion, okay? <clears throat> it's going to take, you know, whatever the forecast they have, they're absurd. And, and unless they've got a cast iron, fully bonded bid, okay? Which they're not going to even going to ask for, because right. that would be that would be embarrassing. But I think it's going to cost us another eight nine billion dollars. Okay, to, 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 to finish get, it, finish it too, and, and to finish it, it's it, you know it's going to Alamoana Center. Well, Alamoana right. Center's got nothing to do with rush hour, right? Yeah. And the sto stores don't open till ten <clears> o'clock <throat> in the morning. Right. So you, you're not helping. Uh, you're not helping anything. Right. Yeah. Well. I want to thank you for coming here and raising this. I wish we had an hour on this program, but unfortunately, I only have 29 minutes. Okay. And I'd love to have you back on again to finish our conversation because we barely scratched the surface. So thank you very much for coming. And let's hope that the voters try to realize and call the representatives about the extension of this uh, get tax. So with that, thank you.